Greetings, everybody, and welcome to Madrid Ball. I hope you all are doing good. Real Madrid are through to the quarterfinals of the Copa del Rey, and what a highly entertaining match we witnessed yesterday. Especially the extra time minutes were complete bonkers. We had players being sent off. We witnessed the opposition on the brink of qualifying. Then we had the usual never say die attitude of Real Madrid. It was another testament that you can never take the risk of writing off the lost plan costs, even in your wildest dreams. The players kept hustling looking to make a comeback in the game and then we had another nervous moment when Elche had scored the second but fortunately the referee rightfully ruled in favor of Madrid and we all can agree the last 30 minutes of extra time had more thrill than what the entire minutes of regular time had to offer. The tempers were flaring but at the end of the night 10 men Real Madrid stood firm in the face of adversity and came out of the Manuel Martinez Valero keeping their Copa del Rey hopes very much alive. So in this video we'll do the post-match analysis of Elche was is Real Madrid. We'll talk about the important happenings of the game, and without further ado, let's get started. And having a look at the lineup, there was Lunin in goal. In the back line, we had Nacho, Alaba, Lucas Vasquez, and club captain Marcelo. In the midfield, we had Valverde, Kavinga, and Tony Cruz. And in attack, we had Rodrigo, Vinicius, and Luka Jovic. And before doing the analysis, let's quickly do the shout out. Two of you were able to predict the correct score line. An ultimate shout out winner today is Mr. Yin Godwin, an icon congratulate you for getting the scoreline correct. And now if we share some thoughts on the starting 11, Ancelotti had a decent mix of youth and experience in the team. Kavinga was given the role of Casemiro and Valverde got a chance to play in his preferred midfield position. But I must say Valverde still hasn't hit the ground running this season. We are yet to see the kind of performances he produced in the past two seasons under Zinedine Zidane. Possibly Ancelotti hasn't been able to back Valverde the way Zidane used to back him. The lack of consistency in minutes has also prevented him from growing the way we desire. But about his today's game, we can easily say that Valverde was one of the players who couldn't show their qualities on the pitch. In fact, in the first half, Real Madrid looked very ineffective on the right. We weren't getting much from the players operating on the right side of the pitch. Lucas Vasquez also had a very poor game. Offensively, he looked out of depth. The overlapping runs weren't effective. The crosses were not good enough. And even Vasquez hasn't showed the kind of form we saw from him in the previous season. You could say there's a lack of determination in the way he plays, and I'm really hoping that he can get his act together soon. Because with Danica Carvajal, there has been a lot of uncertainty of late, and Vasquez, I believe, has got sufficient minutes to get his rhythm and deliver for the team. So it was only Rodrigo who created some sort of threat on the right. Luka Jovic, the Serbian, couldn't get a single shot on target and failed to assert himself in the centre-forward role. He couldn't threaten Elche's goal, and Angelotti finally decided to end the match without any striker, with the two Brazilian boys being the only prominent threat in front of goal. And now if we talk about the first half, the teams played with good intensity in the initial minutes. Elche were sitting in a 4-4-2 defensive setup and going forward they looked to use the aerial threat of the forwards. It was clearly evident what they were trying to do. You could see what the plan was. They were trying to hit Madrid on the counter and in the process they were directing long balls towards the flanks. They put in some very dangerous crosses trying to find the tall attackers and Lunin was called into action more often than he would have liked. In fact in the first half it was Elche who had the better chances but I also thought that none of the teams looked to have the upper hand in the game. It was quite an even affair. Real Madrid were attacking mostly to the left and it was Vinicius Junior who was causing a lot of trouble with his pace. Marcelo and him had formed a good connection and we have to talk about the captain of Real Madrid. Marcelo came up with a brilliant attacking performance on the night. Defensively he did have a few lapses but you can never question the attacking output of the Brazilian. I particularly remember the moment in the 42nd minute when Marcelo did a nutmeg on the Elche man leaving two defenders completely bewildered in the process. He put in a cross afterwards but about Marcelo that's the kind of match we have been graced with dating back to the glorious days. I would still say that attacking wise he is the best Madrid have but obviously in other games we have to take care of the defensive aspect of the game and rightly Mendy steps in to provide defensive cover on the left. And about the second half we can say it was played on similar lines. Both the teams couldn't come up with clear cut attacking chances. Angelotti had to bring on the veterans but as the game progressed Elche got more and more defensive attempting to take the game to extra time and possibly penalties. It just didn't Looked like the team could produce a goal in regular time and finally extra time dawned upon us. It was a test of physical prowess of the players. The new rules have definitely changed things a lot and Ancelotti was ready to use all the tools that he had. We definitely got a scare when we considered and going 
down to 10 men wasn't ideal as well, but with a slice of luck Real Madrid were able to mount a comeback and who would have thought that two unlikely heroes would come to the rescue of Madrid. For the first goal it was Casemiro who was driving at the Elche defence. He cuts it in for Dani Ceballos in space, he takes a shot, but it was Isco whose death touch completely changed the trajectory of the ball and the keeper looked powerless to stop that from rolling in. And after that Real Madrid were playing with desperation in the last 15 minutes and once they picked the momentum they always looked more likely to score. For the second goal it was David Alaba who was able to spot the run of Eden Hazard. He had the pace to go past the tired Elche defence. It was a nice lob ball and then it was all about the magical touch of Eden Hazard. He takes care of the keeper who had come rushing out of his box. Hazard calmly runs the keeper and then from a tight angle he was able to put the ball in an empty net. It was a brilliant goal rounding off the brilliant team effort and that's the kind of thing we have been looking from Eden Hazard. He was super relieved after scoring. We have been demanding him to be more sharp in games. We know he has the ability to produce the magic and just yesterday we were saying that Hassan needs to have some good moments with which he could remember his Real Madrid career if indeed he leaves in the summer and the Belgian came up with a decisive goal which would be surely much appreciated if Madrid lift the copper at the end of the campaign. So thumbs up to Eden Hazard. We know attackers thrive on goals and let's hope that goal from the Belgian would give him the confidence to come up with better performances in the remainder of the season. So overall it was a good game. We did some good things and we have already discussed the players who would be needing to up the game in the matches to come. We are on course to win all the domestic trophies that are there for the taking and let's hope Real Madrid can keep getting good results and get their hands on more silverware come the end of the season. So those were my thoughts on the game and let's conclude this video by hearing the thoughts of Carlo Ancelotti. The coach first assessed the performance of the team as he said the victory has a lot of merit and I'm very happy. I think this was the game that made me the happiest this season because the team showed a lot of character and a lot of strength. We can talk about the difficulties but we must also highlight the character of the team. Then the coach had some words of praise for the match winners in the game. He said Hazard and Isco have won us the game. We have to underline that because it is really significant. They both deserve more minutes. The past is the past. I can call on them and this is a squad that has a bit of everything. They show character, never give in and they fight to the end in spite of adversity. Then Angelotti was asked for his thoughts on the performance of Marcelo and Angelotti was pretty content with the performance of the Brazilian. He replied Marcelo was more involved in the attacking third. We had more chances and he was more involved in two or three really good moves. He posed a threat when he linked up with Vinny Jr. He also did very well defensively. There was one long ball when he found himself bit behind the play but I can count on him. No question about that. And lastly Angelotti shared his views on the international games. He was very upset with the footballing authorities for fitting in more games than what the players can handle physically and Angelotti bashed them in his response. He said we've got a fixture calendar that makes no sense. It's a calendar that forces the players to do inevitable things and we have to change that. I hope that once they wake up those who organize the calendar manage to produce a fairer calendar for everyone. So those were the thoughts of the coach and that concludes the post-match analysis of Elche versus Real Madrid. We would be facing the same opponent on Sunday however that match would be played at the Bernabeu. In the meanwhile do let me know what were your observations from the game and what were the things that caught your eye right in the comments below. I'll see you soon till then take care glory to Madrid and as always a la Madrid.